Okay, now this is a treat. We're here with Jennifer McLagan. Hi, Alison. Uh, great. Whose latest book, Fat, we're delighted to say is Cookbook of the Year for 2009. Now, that's the James Beard Foundation, which for us is like the Oscars in the food world. But you also won the IACP single subject category as well. So, and you're, you're Toronto. Yay! So tell it. What is it like? I know you, didn't, you couldn't attend this year because you were in Paris, but you have been before. Tell us. It is like the Oscars, isn't Actually, it? Actually, I've never been to oh, the you've Beard never been? I've never been to the Beard Awards, oh, but I've seen the pictures. It is like the Oscars. It's a red carpet. Yeah. I said to someone I didn't go because no designer called me up to offer me a dress. <laughs> so I didn't have the right clothes to well, wear. Because it's go. pretty fancy. I saw what Martha Stewart was wearing. And, yeah. and they're all there. They're I mean, all there. It's, uh, a, it's a who's who, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, you know, everyone's TV in a tux and, yeah. and all the people that you know from the Jack Pepin to Emma Roll. It's a Everybody is there. Now, this book, though, Fat, follows on your first book, Bones. So you've done you've got the single subject category locked up it looks like but now let's talk about fat though what prompted you to to do fat and uh it was kind of it started off actually as a joke because when bones came out i was at my editors and we were having a little party for the book and someone said what's your next book going to be and i said i'm going to do the trilogy bones skin and fat <laughs> and it was just a joke <laughs> yeah. you know and then i thought about fat skin no, that's not a very no, big no, book no. Uh, I thought about fat, and then I thought about animal fats, and I thought about how I'd been eating them all the time. I never stopped eating them, and I thought, well, they could do with some good PR. Yeah. And then I went down that road to do animal fats. And that's so, how it started, but nobody else wanted to do it. No. But I'm, tr I mean, I'm glad they actually kept the title fat and didn't do something completely... Uh, yeah, there was a lot of discussion. Yeah, I'll imagine that. Yeah, because I am a big fan of single subject yes. titles, like a single right. strong topic that says exactly what the book is. And the cover is it's brilliant, brilliant, too. It's brilliant. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm just thrilled that they kept that. Now, what, what is your favorite fat yeah. this week? Ah, uh, they change it. Yeah, I know, I can imagine what it is. At the moment, it's suet. Yeah. Because suet is one of those fats that people think of Christmas pudding, they think yes. of mincemeat, but I've been making tea biscuits, or what I would call scones, yes. out of suet. Oh. And at this time, you know, with uh, some fresh berries in yep. there and whipped cream, they make amazingly rich but light scones. Absolutely delicious. Oh. And it's this, the recipe is like there's a cobbler in there, and basically yeah. the topping is just a tea biscuit topping made with suet. Absolutely wonderful. You have to get good suet. Yeah, there's so many different kinds of fat. I mean, yeah. that, and that what not only are the recipes interesting, but also your discussion about your subject. Like, what are the words bones, or in this case, fat, and the different kinds of fat, and the good, the bad, the ugly, and you know, disproving a lot of myths too. Because I know you probably get into a lot of discussion with nutritionists. I can just imagine what they would be like. I get a few nasty emails and yeah. stuff, but I I really worked on the beginning chapter to explain it. Yeah. You don't have to believe me or not, but I I wanted to get it straight in my mind, and I want to explain it to people so they're not scared of fat because mm -hmm. really fat is really good for you, and it's really essential for your mm -hmm. diet. And we need to eat good quality animal fats. We've kind of being seduced by all these vegetable oils right. and some of them are very bad. Bad. Us, bad, bad, bad for our health. And that's not where I started from. I started yeah. from fat equals taste and flavor. Let's have some great fat right. recipes we've forgotten. And I went over to that side to try and put in that part to, just so people didn't be scared. What was stop being scared of fat. And then I put in like I did before the little kind of weird tales about yeah. the butter and and, you know, and those are fun. Yeah, they're fun and it makes the book more interesting to read I think too. Now when you say you started but even before you started became an author, you were a food stylist. Mm -hmm. How was that transition going from food styling to and photography to, to an author, to the other side, so to speak, of the fence? How did you find that transition? In? It's interesting. Um, with the first book, I didn't let go of anything. I didn't let go of the food styling. This is the first book I let go of the food styling. Was that hard? That was a big... Yeah. But I thought it was time to let someone else look at my recipes. And see it from a different angle. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I think they did a brilliant yeah. job. I have no complaints. I think I went... I'd always be, I'd done some articles before yes. um, for Toronto Life and stuff. Then I food styled, and then I did so many other people's books. I'm thinking I could do one of these, right. and that's why I decided to try it at least once. And now I like it so much more because it's really interesting. What part do you, do you find the recipe writing interesting, like the actual developing? Or was uh, the developing's the, fun. The writing yeah. is really kind of that something I learned. You really have to be pretty disciplined, right. you know, because they want you to say. If you say in a frying pan, then you say take the frying pan. They they want all that to be the same yes. in the recipes. They want that kind yes. of precision, which makes me a little crazy. Yeah. But I think it's great doing a cookbook because you can do the recipes, and if they're not working, you can go back to writing. And if you can't write anything or you can't get any ideas, right. you go back to cooking. So you can yeah. split it up. Well, but I do like the research. The research is my favorite part to do. And that that's evident in this because so many books are, or you know, you can tell a person's a really great, strong recipe writer, and not so much in the research, maybe, or vice versa. But you really do come through with both. Now, you said trilogy. 
What's the third going to be? If it's not going to be skin, then... No, it's not going to be skin, and I can't get it down. Well, of course, you know, it's very hard to hang on to titles. Yeah. Right? But the next one, the working title, is Odd Bits. Ooh. And I'm going to run that odd together. Bits. Oh, I, one time. As, as I'm going to run and make it one Fantastic. word. Fantastic. Um, and it's going to be subtitled, What to Do with the Rest. Fantastic. And I want people to... I think it's perfect for today, but I yeah. want people to find out and remember how to cook tongue and cheeks and neck. Use and the whole carcass, that whole nose to tail kind yeah, of uh, eating, experience. But give those recipes that are pretty much disappearing yes. out of it. You know, if you've not, unless you've got a really old cookbook, and then the recipe in the old cookbook is kind of so not today's taste. Right. You know, my, my greatest discovery is at the moment, because it's barbecue season, is barbecued heart. Barbecued heart? Yeah. Is it comes from Peru, it's Peruvian, little bits of heart that's marinated. Beef, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen. We look forward to that. Thank and you. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Thanks. Uh, medals next time. Yes. We see you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Thanks, Allison.